Welcome to the Chronicles of a Christian Drama Queen podcast. I am your host and the original Christian Drama Queen, Lisa Ann Schaefer, and I am glad you are here. I can promise you that I know what it's like to think like a lover of Jesus, but live like a hot mess every day. So if you can relate, you're in the right place. Everything from the craziness of homeschooling my kids to overcoming deep wounds of abandonment and abuse. I want you to stay with me, sister. I have walked down those paths and I've got decades of healing and hope that God's called me to share. Here we go. All right. Welcome. Thanks for being here, guys. Uh, Again, I will remind you that you can find out more about me and learn more about me on my website, which is christiandramaqueen.com. You can also find my YouTube channel where I've got tons of videos for homeschoolers. I say tons dozens of homeschool videos. I even teach people how to lap book there. If you don't know what that is, check it out. And uh, and then, of course, if you just, you know, like I said, if you want to get to know me better, you can go to christiandramaqueen.com and do that. Share the podcast with people, folks. That's the only way that the message is going to get out there. I feel led and called by God to share what I'm sharing with you guys today and uh, every day. But if you don't share it, then the message stops. And it's just like evangelizing. Sometimes we got to keep talking, right? You got to keep sharing, especially with those that are hurting. I feel like this this is really what God's called me to do is just kind of share a message of hope. So I'm going to start today with something that really set me off on this journey of of podcasting and writing. Uh, I'm going to read to you a little bit today from the Bible study I've written. It's called Discarded. It is available on Amazon. You can share that link too if you find it. Uh, it is uh, the um, it's the story. It's it's a daughter's journey to reclaim freedom and forgive the father who left her behind. Uh, that is the subtitle of the study. And uh, this is how I got into this. I got started podcasting simply because I felt like God was calling me to show people how they could forgive even what seems to be impossible, um, impossible folks to forgive. And um, I want you to know that there is a way. So this this particular podcast is going to be about that a little piece of that journey. And so I want to share that with you guys today. I remember my father left when I was two, um, not quite two years old. He and my mother got divorced. Um, I uh, it kind of set me off down this road of um, mistaking the attributes of God, not understanding what a heavenly father was like, because I really didn't have an earthly father to compare fatherhood to. Um, and, and so this is just one of the stories that I tell in the Bible study that was part of the journey um, as a discarded daughter. Um, you can also find me on Facebook under Discarded Daughters. I have a group of people there that we just, they, they would kind of help me write the, the Bible study when I was doing that, started that last year. So please, you know, look me up. I'm absolutely authentic and I'm, what I'm sharing with you guys is me, okay? But this was uh, a lot of bad decisions in life and uh, a lot of healing that needed to happen, a lot of forgiveness both for me and from me. And so today what I'm going to talk about is drama queens like me feel needy. I was very needy. I remember my grandmother always kept her house too warm. And this uh, vivid memory still causes my face to get warm, red, flushed with emotion. But here it goes. When I was maybe four, my mother became engaged to a man. His name was Walter, and he was a naval officer. He was good looking, I guess. For, for the, and he seemed like a giant to me. My little four-year-old mind just looked up at him and saw greatness. He was he was just a big man. Looking back, he seemed like a decent guy. We discovered a few months later that he had some unexposed baggage of his own to deal with, um, probably material for the next journey I write about. But anyway, I remember vividly sitting on his lap at a family gathering the evening that he and my mother announced their engagement. The living room was really very small, probably, I don't know, 14 by 18. Uh, it was full with my grandparents, my baby brother, my mother, 
a few other relatives surrounding us. I remember those shiny, waxy, polished wooden side tables and coffee tables with just a spattering of heavy glass coasters here and there. A few cans held beer and several were just topped with soda cans and glasses of iced tea. And this was before we knew the dangers of secondhand smoke. And my grandfather and my aunts were all smokers. My grandmother was not. So I want you to imagine the cloud of smoke that rested halfway between the ceiling and the floor. It was always fascinating to me how the smoke would literally make an imaginary borderline blocking the cloud from descending any further. And it was always right about head level for me at that age. I was determined not to let my glistening, happy tears fall. My thoughts mimicked the bustling, swirling autumn leaves that danced in the tornadic fashion right outside my grandfather's garage. And the anxiety of my fretful thoughts made me feel like the thermostat was set to 90. I mean, surely everyone in the room could see the steam rising off the top of my head, right? But the grandest thought? Maybe, just maybe, this Walter would be my daddy. Maybe if I asked him the right way, he'd even let me call him daddy. But how do I ask him? How do I say, please, please, please let me call you daddy? I specifically remember having my hands clenched like little golden potatoes in front of my face, covering my mouth and concealing this tiny toothy grin. I knew this was the time to ask. Everyone in the room was visiting and chatting, scarcely paying any attention to me. This was it. This was my time. So I leaned into him and I said, just as quietly as I could get by with, Walter, can I call you daddy? He turned his head to my face and he said, what? Now, I guess I'd been a little too quiet. So now the room was almost silent and I was all of a sudden painfully aware that all the world really is a stage and I was just a glow under the spotlight, but it didn't matter. This was after all my big moment. So I leaned in a bit closer, but I spoke just a little bit louder. Walter, can you, can I call you daddy? He jerked his head slightly away from my face. He looked at me with this massive smile and he said with a very exuberant chortle, <laughs> well, I suppose you sure can. And as he pulled me closer into this little bit of a hug and I wrapped my skinny little arms around his massive navel neck, I felt so happy. Of course, everyone in the room was kind of ooing and awing, laughing at the sweetness of my question as well as Walter's hearty response. And I was, of course, over the moon because for the first time ever, at the age of four, I felt like I had someone to call daddy. Maybe you've heard about me or you've heard about my study or you've heard about this podcast because you're a discarded daughter like me. So I have to ask, do you constantly feel unwanted because your earthly father is not, and nor was he ever there for you? Or maybe you feel unwanted because when he was around, he acted like anything but a real father to you. Certainly not like a father that wanted you. And do you think no one sees your pain? No one hears your negative self-talk? No one knows your deepest feelings? No one knows your fears or your desires? Surely nobody wants to hear what you have to think or say. So have you told yourself you're invisible? Or maybe you just wish you were? Have you convinced yourself there must be something wrong with you because daddy left? Or worse, for some of us, because he stayed. Have you told yourself that it's useless? And there is no hope for you. See, I know what that feels like. I know the neediness of not having a father that was around for me. I know the heartache that comes from him not showing up to events and not sending birthday cards and not even being a part of birthday parties. I know what it's like for him to just use me 
to get something that he wanted. And maybe you're the same way. And maybe you know others that are the same way. So I'm going to share something with you right now, okay? So we're going to look at Psalm 139 real quick before I close today. And we're going to look at the 1st through the 18th verse, okay? So I'm just going to read this to you as soon as I get to the top, okay? So, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. And you know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from far away. You discern my going out and my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me and your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. You created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. And I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. And when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days planned for me were written in your book before there was even one of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they'd outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I'm still with you. Sister, those times when we feel needy, it's because we feel disconnected or, or missing from the vision of God. But he sees you and has seen you from the very beginning, before you were formed, before days were written for, before you experienced daylight. He saw you in the depths. Christian drama queen, are you needy? And if you are, can you understand that your heavenly father wants to be the one that you count on as your daddy? Think about it. If you want to know more about me, it's very, very easy. Just find the YouTube channel at Christian Drama Queen, or you can go to my website, ChristianDramaQueen.com. If you want to know more about the Bible study, you can shoot me an email at Lisa at ChristianDramaQueen.com. And of course, it's available on Amazon. Discarded by Lisa Ann Schaefer. There's also an undated planner that goes with that. It kind of keeps you on track. Listen, have an amazing day. And remember, you know I love you.